Let's start the first section of our lecture tonsillectomy and in this section we will discuss the indications which can be some absolute uh, indications and relative indications for tonsillectomy and then when tonsillectomy will be performed as a part of some other operation that will be discussed in this section also then we will discuss some contraindications indications are what are the conditions in which we perform tonsillectomy contraindications what are the conditions or uh, when we cannot or we should not perform tonsillectomy so indications and contraindications will be discussed in this section and also we will discuss the position of the patient during the procedure and what type of anesthesia can be used so absolute indications of uh, tonsillectomy uh, we have a recurrent infection of throat so recurrent infection of the throat if it's present and that is an indication absolute indication for tonsillectomy and this recurrent infection then again has some uh, classification also which is seven or more episodes in one year so if there are seven or more episodes of throat infection in one year, that's the absolute indication of tonsillectomy. Then five episodes per year for two years. Five episodes each year, but at least for two years, that's another absolute indication. Three episode per year for three years. So if the episodes are decreasing, the uh, time period is increasing. So uh, uh, seven episode one year, then we have five episode two year, three episode th uh, th th five episode two year, and three episode in three years. So the episodes are decreasing and time is increasing. If there is recurrent infection of the throat, that's an absolute indicator of tonsillectomy. Two weeks or more of law school or work in one year. So all these are absolute, absolute uh, indications of uh, tonsillectomy and the children who have this problem they complain of recurrent throat infection and that leads to uh, missing the schools a lot. So all the time they are sick and then ultimately they have to go through tonsillectomy so, so they should feel better. So that these are the absolute indications of tonsillectomy. Then the peritonsillar abscess. The abscess or formation of the pus in the area around the tonsils is also an absolute indication of tonsillectomy. Then in children, tonsillectomy is done four to six weeks after abscess has been treated. So if there is abscess, peritonsillar abscess, First, we need to treat that abscess once the child is recovered or patient is recovered from the abscess, then they go for tonsillectomy. So at least a time of four to six weeks after abscess. In adults, second attack of peritonsillar abscess forms the absolute indication. So first, even with the first attack in children, that's the absolute indication, but in adults, the second attack of peritonsillar abscess forms the absolute indication. Next, tonsillitis. Inflammation of the tonsils causes febrile seizures. Hypertrophy of the tonsil, enlargement of the tonsil, airway obstruction. So all these are the absolute indication. Uh, hypertrophy can cause uh, obstructive sleep apnea, airway obstruction. That needs to be, uh, tonsillectomy needs to be performed. It also can cause the difficulty in swallowing, deglutition. 
uh, interference with speech, then the suspicion of malignancy are unilaterally enlarged on cell, maybe lymphoma in children. So all these are absolute indication tonsillectomy should be performed if there is tonsillitis, if there is recurrent episodes of th uh, throat infection, peritonsillar abscess, any uh, 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 suspicion of malignancy, hypertrophy of the tonsil because it can cause airway obstruction and difficulty in de deglutition. And then uh, we have, uh, these are some absolute indications in which tonsillectomy or removal of tonsils need to be done. An epidermoid carcinoma in adults, again, this is the suspicion of malignancy. An excisional biopsy is done. So it's important that biopsy should be done to uh, find out if there is any malignancy or not. Relative indications of uh, tonsillectomy, diphtheria carriers who do not respond to antibiotics, they sh should have a relative uh, indication for tonsillectomy. Streptococcal carrier, strep throat is a relative indication of a tonsillectomy. Chronic tonsillitis with bad taste in the mouth. Bad taste in the mouth sometimes is very, very, uh, um, not a very good feeling. So the patients who have chronic tonsillitis, chronic infection of the tonsils, they develop that bad uh, taste in the mouth. Halitosis, unresponses, bad breath. Lot of people who have uh, tonsillitis or history of chronic tonsillitis, they have halitosis or bad breath from the mouth and they need it, it to be treated and for that the tonsillectomy, that's the relative indication for tonsillectomy. Recurrent uh, streptococcal tonsillitis in a patient with valvular heart disease because it uh, the complication of strep throat can be the uh, uh, rheumatic fever that affects the valves of the heart, develop the murmur. So recurrent streptococcal infection is the uh, relative indication also. As a part of another operation, we have um, uh, palatopharyngoplasty, repair of the palate and the pharynx, palatopharyngoplasty. As a result of that uh, procedure, tonsillectomy need to be done. Glossopharyngeal neurorectomy, removal of styloid process, now some contraindications, what are the conditions in which we should not perform the tonsillectomy? Is um, a hemoglobin level less than 10 gram? So if somebody is anemic and they need to do the uh, tonsillectomy or it's an absolute indication, the first thing is they need to improve the hemoglobin level by the medicines or maybe blood transfusion or the nutrition. And once they are hemoglobin level is uh, raised, then they can go through the procedure. Uh, acute infection in upper respiratory tract infection need to be cured and after the infection is cured then they give about a time six to eight weeks after that the procedure can be done. So all these are contraindication when you cannot go away right away for the tonsillectomy. Children under three years of age they need to wait until they are three years of age, at least overt or submucous cleft palate. Bleeding disorders, uncontrolled systemic disease, 
and period of menses. So during the menstrual cycle, this procedure is not performed. Bleeding disorder, patient might have a bleeding disorder. They have a tendency to bleed more. They have a, t a hard time stopping the bleeding. So all these are contraindications in which tonsillectomy should be avoided. Once the condition is improved and there is absolute indication, then we should go for the uh, procedure. So next, the anesthesia, which is used for uh, tonsillectomy, it can be usually the general anesthesia is uh, given with endotracheal intubation. So general anesthesia is preferred, but in adults, maybe local anesthesia can be used, but uh, general anesthesia with endotracheal intubation is uh, given. The position of the patient is uh, known as the uh, roses uh, position. Supine, this is the supine position. In supine, the patient is on the back with the head uh, face uh, upward. So supine with head extended. This is flexion, this is extension. So you can see the head is extended by placing a pillow under the shoulder. So this is known as roses position with the patient supine head extended with the pillow under the shoulder. A rubber ring placed under head to stabilize. Hyperextension should be avoided. So it's not be hyperextended, just a comfortable extension is required. So that concludes the section one of our lecture in which we talked about the absolute indications, uh, relative indications of tonsillectomy. Then we talked about some contraindications of tonsillectomy and then the position of the patient and anesthesia given for the procedure. So all that we discussed in our section one. Thank you for watching scardia.com.